I'm Cindy with Quarterbyte. Today we are going to go over a binary search, one of the most popular searching algorithms. We'll cover what it is, how it works, and how to implement it recursively and iteratively using JavaScript. So let's dive right into what it is. Binary search is very powerful because it offers us one of the quickest ways to search through a sorted list of items. It is likely that you've used binary search in real life. For example, let's imagine we are at a bookstore and we want to find a book written by George Orwell. We know that all the books in each shelf are sorted alphabetically by the author's last name. We could search from the beginning of the shelf and check every book until we hit one by George Orwell. In this situation, we would have to check across seven books before we find the book written by George Orwell. A more practical way to search through these books would be to follow divide and conquer paradigm. That is, we could pick a book in the middle and compare it to our target. Fitzgerald comes before Orwell, so we know that we can eliminate everything from the left of Fitzgerald from our search. And we would re then repeat the same process again by dividing the remaining right side in half and selecting the middle element to compare. Oral matches the author we are searching. Using the binary search approach, we only needed to check against two books in order to find the book that we wanted. Unlike the linear search, we didn't have to search across the entire array. How does binary search work? Let's dive into an example with an array of numbers to pseudocode how it actually works. Here, we are given an array of nine sorted numbers with indices from zero to eight. We also have a target of seven that we are searching for, which does exist in the array. It is important to note that binary search only works with a sorted collection of things. So our first step would be to figure out what our left and right markers are. That is, what are our boundaries as to what section of the array are we looking at with each pass? With our first pass, we want to include the entire array in our search, so we set the boundaries to the elements at the index of 0 and 8. Step 2. We determine what the mid is. We can figure this out by getting the average of the left and right indices. We have 0 plus 8 divided by 2 gives us 4. We then take the element located at the mid and compare it to the target value. So we have 10, which is greater than 7. Because we know that the mid has an element that is greater than the target, we can eliminate everything that's on the right-hand side from including the mid. We now cannot repeat the same steps 1 to 3 for the remaining section of the array. So we reassign what our left and right markers are. We determine what the mid is. In this scenario, we have 0 plus 3 divided by 2 is equal to 1.5. Because we can't have half an element, we round down and set our mid to be the element at an index of 1. We know that 7 is equal to 7, and we can say then that we found our target in just two passes. So let's look at a second scenario where we're trying to search for a target that does not exist in the array. For example, let's look for a target of 15. We'll repeat the same steps, determine our left and right markers, get our mid. A mid of 10 is less than the target of 15, so we eliminate everything on the left-hand side. Repeat the same steps again, get our left and right, determine the mid. 17 is greater than the target of 15, so we eliminate the right. And now we're only left with one element, which is both our left, our right, and also our mid. And we know that 13 does not equal to 15. So we actually reach a situation where we can no longer repeat steps one to three anymore, and we have to stop searching. Another way to rephrase this is that whenever our left is greater or equal to our right, we no longer have elements that we can search across. Okay, let's 
Let's take a look at how we would implement binary search iteratively. We want to write a method, binary search, that's going to take an array of sorted numbers and a target. If it's given a target that is found, we'll return the index of where that element's located. And if it's given one that's not found, we'll return false. So with our first step, we're going to set our left and right markers. We're going to start at the first element. And our right marker is going to start at the last element, so array.length minus 1. And then we're going to determine how we're going to loop. Because we don't know how many times we'll need to loop, and we also don't want to check every single element in the array if we could avoid it, let's use a while loop. And like we saw before, we saw that we're going to keep searching as long as there's elements left for us to search. So while the left is less than the right, we will keep searching. With each search, we're going to have to determine what the mid is. And we said that this is going to be the average of the left with the right. Average divided by 2. Because it could be have like a decimal, we need to do math.floor. Cool. Now that we have the mid, we can do the comparison. So in the ideal situation, if the target is equal to the array at the mid, which means we found it, we're just going to return the index. Else if, scenario two, the target is less than the array at the mid. So in this situation, the target is less than the middle element. We know that we can ignore everything on the right hand side of the mid and including the mid, and just search the left-hand side. So we can reassign like what our right is. We can now say that it's the mid minus 1. We don't need to check everything on the right-hand side anymore. Cool. And in the last scenario, where the target is greater than the array at the mid, we can reassign what our left is, right? If the target is greater, we know that everything on the left-hand side of the mid is too small, so we're going to check everything on the right. So we'll move what our left is closer to the right-hand side, and we'll say that it is the mid plus 1. Great. We're not done yet. Um, if we finish running through this while loop and still nothing is found, then we need to return false. Okay. This looks good. So let's run this and see what happens. Great. So we get one and we get false. So something that we may be asked in an interview is to think about what our time and space complexity is. That is, as our array size, our input size increases substantially, how will our implementation be impacted? So with time complexity, as we saw before with our search, searching in the books in the library or in the bookstore, every single time we looped, we divided the array in half. So what makes binary search so great is that it's fast. It's faster than a linear search. We keep on doing this divide and conquer approach, and it has a time complexity of O of log of n. In terms of space complexity, the, with the way that we've implemented this currently, Regardless of how large the array is, we don't create more arrays. And that's primarily because we have the left and right markers that we just update what we're referencing. So it has a constant constant uh, space complexity of one. Look at how we would implement this recursively. Here we have the solution from our iterative solution, and we're going to use this as a base. So with recursion, we are no longer have a loop, and we also are going to need to recursively call a method. So with this, I am going to pull out like a main method that's going to call a helper method recursively. I'll have my main method called binary search. It's going to take in an array and a target. And it's going to return the helper method, binary search helper, which will be this one here. I'm going to update this. So because we're not looping anymore, we don't have 
markers for left and right that get updated in our loops. What that means though is that we're, every single recursive call will need to know what the left and right is, and it's going to need to be passed in. So this will need the array, the target, and also it will need the left and the right. So let's define that in the method definition itself. But in our call on line four, we need to start off with the values that we need with the first call. So the left is going to be the first element. The right is going to be the array.length minus one, the last element. Okay. And since we said that we no longer need to set these variables, we can remove them. The second thing we need to do is we need to replace our while loop with our base case. So with recursion, we're basically going to have to continuously call binary search helper until we hit our base case. So we can replace this with something like if left is greater than right, which means we haven't found the target, then we're gonna return false. And that means we can take this away, this away, and we also can return this return false here. So if we, we don't hit the space case, then we still need the mid, that still holds true. We still wanna return the mid if we found the target. But now that we no longer assign our right and left within each loop, but rather it gets passed in, we'll have to update what happens here and actually recursively call binary search helper with the updated left or right values. So it's gonna need the array, it's gonna need the target. And in this situation, because the target is less than the array at the mid, which means that it can ignore everything to the right, we need to update what our right is, which is now we can just look at the mid minus one. We look at a smaller section of the array. And same thing with this, we return binary search helper with the array, target, and because we know the target is greater than the array at the mid, then we can update what left is. So this would be mid plus one, and this would be right. Okay, so let's run this now and see what we get. Great, and there we go. We've implemented binary search recursively. Let's briefly talk about, again, the time and space complexity. So with this recursive call, the time complexity is gonna be the same thing. It's going to be O of log of n. And then with space complexity, with recursion, this will have a larger space complexity than the iterative approach because we need to count the call stacks. Every time we have a recursive call, it's going to take up space. And that is also going to be O of log of n. So ideally, if possible, we should try to approach writing binary search with the iterative solution since it has the same time complexity but a smaller space complexity. Okay, so just to recap, we've learned a lot about binary search. We saw how it is a very powerful searching algorithm that can be used only on a sorted collection of things but that it is one of the fastest ways that we have to search through uh, a sorted collection. We also saw that we could implement it both recursively and iteratively, but where we can, the iterative approach is better since it has a constant space complexity. And now that we know so much about binary search, I would encourage you to check out some of the coding challenges that we have at CoderByte, where you can practice implementing binary search in real challenges that you may get at an interview. See you next time. Thank you for watching.